Everybody's favorite sad dads, Jim and Foo. Hey, <sighs> welcome to Sad Dads Club Podcast, episode 149. 149. I'm the Lord Foo. And I'm Jim. I would like to talk to you about my new obsession with AC micromanagement. <laughs> now, this feels like a, a show long explanation i i could and i we probably all got lucky that i covered some of it in what would be last week's episode which was only two days ago are you going to combine this with any sort of fence chat no <laughs> okay good luckily for everyone else because <laughs> damn welcome to fence chat welcome to fence chat how can i help you i'm the lord for your fence post master <sighs> uh so uh, it was covered loosely last last week. Uh, I installed a centric air uh, whole house fan, uh, of which we covered after the show in a conversation. But the I was looking at a quiet cool, which we had mentioned when Dave was here. So yeah. hashtag hi Dave. The quiet cool or the uh, centric air that he had mentioned that he was looking at, along with another manufacturer that. It escapes me at the time, but I had done more work uh, on the. That's not a fly. That's a bead of sweat. Awesome. <laughs> I had done some more research based off what his recommendations, and I had done a little bit more review hunting on the two. So I ended up ditching the quiet cool fan model that were I was looking. Were at. they actually like loud, warm? What were they? Like? Yeah. I, I mean, if for and as far as it, I'm kidding, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, they weren't even close. It's smart assery. Yes, yeah, uh, not hot shit, but cold diarrhea. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, on Amazon, if you're looking at these things, for the most part, the the thumbnails and the screenshots of the two products at the price points that probably most of us are looking at, they look. And function relatively the same. There is a register that you're going to put in uh, your wall or a high point somewhere in your house. It has an insulated duct, and it has a really big fan. The fan, based on your price point or however much you're spending, moves X amount of cubic feet per minute. And really, you're trying to purchase a fan that meets or exceeds how many square f- feet you have in your home. Right, right. Uh, the fan model that I bought uh, m- is rated for a 3,000 square foot single story home or a 4,000 square foot two story home. My home is roughly 1,700. Hashtag hi wife. Thank you for correcting me on the square footage of our home, which I blew two episodes ago. <laughs> anyway, so there's your circle back, wife. I love you. Thank you so much for keeping it real. Uh, <laughs> Damn uh, it for not getting all of your figures proper. Right. So that's what she's here for. She's my fact checker. So I, I don't our, know if I can continue to do these home, shows. Yeah. Our home is roughly, it's just over 1700 with the new edition. Uh-huh. The fan that I bought was 3000 So... Uh, kind of how I touched base maybe an episode or two ago, I was looking for something that was really excessive so that way I would never have to feel like I had kind of we when we talked about AC, uh, I didn't want to shoot exactly the target. I wanted to shoot over it so that way I had room to grow if something were to happen or if... Like something. if someone watered the house and it grew, or, you know, yeah, yeah, you know, just magically something happens and all of a sudden there's <laughs> another set of square footage here, and you know, or I put a foot through a wall. Who, who the fuck knows? And there's a hole and there's extra space to put. So I overshot. Uh, it was roughly sounds what, like a porn. Yeah, a foot through the wall and overshot. <laughs> <laughs> 
hey, <laughs> this spawns a whole group chat. Um, so over purchased, happy with the purchase. It was worth the price point. It was about twelve hundred bucks. The we filled out the form that we had talked about. Also, the city of Roseville is offering as long as your fan can move two thousand square foot a minute or more you get a $400 rebate. Now, we're presuming that that's probably a bill credit, not necessarily a check that cut you, mm. but we don't know. They, I, I think it's um, they do it with uh, gift cards to... Uh... Oh, tar- Target or Walmart. <laughs> yeah. Hello, sir. <laughs> now you go get gift card to Target. Exactly. What? <laughs> that's, this is how it is. That's how it is. Yeah. Uh, Venus filled out the form. It takes like an eight week delivery of which one of the things when you fill out the form, uh, she said that you're signing a waiver that says that you're authorizing, authorizing them to come and inspect that it's actually installed, that you're not trying to get oh. form. I'm like, who the fuck spends 1200 bucks? <clears throat> well, doesn't put it in just to get 400. You get your back. 400 and then you take it back. I guess you could. Re- right. You could and then you get your 400 bucks. You, yeah. You could do that. And then you're like. Unemployment. Yeah. Cool, man. For, I'm just going to do this like a lot more times, and then I don't ever have to work except for sending stuff back to Amazon and then creating I can, fake accounts. I can buy an RC car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or a Honda Fit. <laughs> <laughs> so, just, I'm in a mood today. Yeah. So the, uh, happy with the purchase. The I did go looking for... The one that, because David mentioned, yeah, because it's a German motor and and the fan blade something, uh, the that one all is made by Centric, but it is like the um, the pinnacle. Yeah, if you're buying the the Honda EX, the one Dave was talking about was essentially the Acura Integra, same model, but it's got more premium shit in it. Uh-huh. Uh huh. That one was seven, seventeen hundred bucks. Uh, I would have thought about it, but it was just a l- a little bit too far, given that I hadn't installed anything before. Um, and like I said, when I looked at the quite cool stuff, the sh- the fan shroud, the reviews that I'd run across, the fan shroud seemed kind of flimsy. The fan blades didn't look like they were balanced right, and oftentimes the grill was too close to the fan blades. But the centric air stuff, and even when I installed it, it looked like a quality piece of kit well i was very impressed with the design the integrity of it two thumbs up absolutely so far two thumbs up uh it also mounts to two studs whereas the quiet cool uh, mounting apparatus was to drywall and you and i touched on this loosely now if you're a homeowner or you're someone that has punched holes accidentally in a drywall (laughs) and throwing a controller across a room or you've got a dog that's, I don't know, is also a circus dog, or you have really big people coming through your room and b- punching holes in drywall. You know that when you get close to an edge of drywall and then you start manipulating, like putting screws or stuff in it. A fresh cut edge. A fresh cut edge. Yeah. And if you mess up at all or you put too much pressure in it, the sheetrock in between the paper starts to crumble, yeah. and then it's fucking worthless. Yeah. It's worthless to screw into. Then you got to drywall your whole house. R- you, you know, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Or you f- you're fucking spackling. Uh huh. When you thought you were done, <laughs> it's fucking, it's never ending. Uh, their mounting apparatus for the register was all just through the drywall. It was very light. It looked like the same type of product, but the Centric had you mounting it to a stud with some support brackets, which made me feel more confident about the quality of the install and help prohibiting me from fucking up drilling into drywall only. Yeah, I wouldn't be comfortable with that either, I think. Um, so I had spent the bulk of uh, the Sunday last week doing that all up in the attic basically i was kind of how we talked about in the last episode you sometimes you get that like i if i I don't want to start 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 yeah i had start one trepidation a lot of things uh the price point really helped push me into well i'm not i spent i spent a bunch of money right i spent one we've been in century temperature marks and the AC has been running gangbusters. Yeah. So as as someone that 
has to pay the bills and someone's looking to help curb some of those things as we're starting to get into an energy crisis, as we're people are starting to look into save energy, all these things. I bought this 1200 bucks, not chump change. I need to get this working for me and the family and you know, neighbors and everyone else who uses energy in the fucking state. I need to get this in the attic. So 100 day, 100, 100 degree day, I get up in the attic. That's, what, a, that's a bad move. Uh, yeah. It See, was like then. Let, I, let, me like, ju- let me just, let me throw this at you just for shits and giggles. Okay. It's really hot in the day. Your attic's really hot in the day. Yes. <clears throat> it's dark in the attic. Yes. You could have done it at night when it was cooler. And it would have been no uh, different. The thing is, uh, uh, like we said, yeah. I had a thermostat in in the in the attic yeah. for like the last two weeks. So it hasn't cooled down. It enough. doesn't cool off. I mean, yeah. If I wanted to do an install at three a.m. Yeah. when it's it's starting to get seventies because we're back to back to back hundred degree days. Uh, you are absolutely correct. I was having to turn on lights and carry lights with me either way. Yeah. So it's dark either way. Yeah. The problem is me banging around and dropping drills onto drywall probably would have been impactful to the other three people sleeping in the house. Yeah. So they're all gonna benefit. I grinned and bared it, and I'm like, "Fuck it, I'm just doing it." Uh, there's a lot of crawling around and whatnot. It's funny because I, you know, I haven't been in a sauna in quite so many years. <laughs> But one of the things you forget about as the temperatures got close to like 120 degrees in the attic is that as I'm grabbing for tools and I'm moving things around and I'm screwing things in and moving this giant fan apparatus around, it's 120 degrees up there. Everything up there is 120 degrees. It's all hot. So I go to grab for like a drill or a screwdriver or the fucking fan shroud, Uh and it is hot. Hot. Yeah. Hot. Not to mention the amount of sweat that drips into your yeah. eyes. I had I had been up there maybe an hour or two, and I was using my like stereotypical like sleeveless, you know, t shirt cut off things, and it was wasn't so bad for a while, but at somewhere in there, I couldn't tell you the exact temperature. <clears throat> uh, it turns into flop sweat, like yeah. it's, a, it's a hot mop. I'm yeah. a hot mop. Well, at some point, your body just doesn't cool off anymore. Right. You know? So uh, I had to, the mistake I made a couple times was that I had to come back down out of the fucking attic yeah. to get something, and, and it's nice and don't cool. Don't want to, and I don't want to. Yeah. And then, but I'm sh- just, I'm just trying to imagine you with your tank top and a thong. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> just you, up in the attic. It where- probably would have been better, <laughs> but it's, so everything is soaked. So I, ha- I take off a shirt. Yeah put on a new shirt and I throw the wet one into the tub and it is like a, a washcloth. Like I just run it, soaked it and throw it in it. Like it's soaked, completely soaked. Go up. Uh, I'm up there for another hour, hour and a half, two hours. Who the fuck knows? I don't know. I start to black out at some point. I'm sure. (laughs) Uh, Come back down for another thing. And Oh, it was because my dad had stopped by to drop off a tray of fruit from the upper pasture of plums and, whatnot nice uh so i I, hey excuse to come down get some water absolutely cool off a little bit but at that point too shirt flop sweat yeah it's it's a hot mop chuck that into the bathtub put a new shirt on you know greet my dad because i'm a civilized man Uh, hey dad you know we shot the shit for maybe five ten minutes Uh, i gotta get back up there uh, I, ru- I, you know, floss it, it, the another heat, shirt. The hottest part of the day is coming i need to be in the attic. yeah i gotta get back up there dad come on man uh but it it was it was hard yeah uh, and uncomfortable yeah and i'm thankful for my current abilities physically to be able to be doing the crawling around i can only imagine how problematic a lot of that shit will be if i was 5 years older with a bad hip or something mm-hmm. you know uh there were a lot of duck and crawl crab walk shit and it was hot. It was really hot. Yeah. Uh, I'm glad I got it done, probably in the physical caliber that I my body is in right now, because I don't see me being able to do that if I had some sort of injury. So it all got relatively done, but then it was, 
well, h- how does this work? Because this is new to me. I don't, I don't have any sort of, I haven't had one. Right. And I've never lived in a home, you know, I lived in the country, uh, where everyone, you just open windows, but we didn't have, we didn't even have a central heating and air in Grass Valley. Oh, wow. So it's a box fan or an oscillating fan or n- no. Window, windows are open. Yeah. And you, you go outside. You want to get cool? Go the fuck outside and dance on the hose. Right. Okay, Dad. You know. And, all right. Right. Uh, yeah. It is what it is. Me, Lord. Uh, watch out. Now the watch wants to update. <laughs> <laughs> when it rains, it pours. Rains, it pours. It's a, it's a day of updates. Um, so then, like, the micromanagement of, like, the... Well, how, how does this work? Now, if you are if you read the instructions or whatnot, basically they're telling you, hey, when it gets 20 degrees, lower than it is outside in the attic and whatnot, and they give you temperatures to shoot for, like, when it's 70 outside, yeah, that's when you want to use a fan. Where are they doing this testing at? Right. Now, if you're around here, uh, <laughs> uh, by the time it hits 70, um, it's like... It's two, fall. Two, yeah. <laughs> It's fucking maybe 2 a.m. Yeah. So that becomes yeah. unproductive to me. Yeah. So I spent Monday, a lot of Monday, using a lot of like the thermostat stuff that I've been tracking the last couple episodes. Like thermostat, like, when is it? Uh, wh- where can I use this? When can I actually turn it on? Uh, so obviously, conventional wisdom is, if it's... Ni- oh, they're going to get yummy pokey. If it's 90-something outside... Uh, it makes no sense if it, especially if it's low eighties, low, low, low eighties, where we're supposed to be setting our thermostats anyway, high, right. high seventies. If you're trying to save a couple extra pennies, you're like me, you're just setting it at 80. Uh, it makes no sense if it's 90 degrees outside for you to pull in 90 degree air. Right. This is what I was saying. Right. right? Yeah. <clears throat> to, to a cool home. Just to have this this fan on, right? But the and you would be right on paper, uh, because that just doesn't make sense. But when I'm looking at the stats of, uh, and I explained this to you, so this is right. a little bit of repeat. But for everybody else, so when it gets 120 something degrees in the attic, and that's just like a hot blanket on top of us, uh, it makes more, especially when I am setting my home. My thermostat at 80 degrees, my, my AC will run longer trying to keep us at 80 with a 120-degree attic than it will if I spend an hour and a half to two hours pulling in air from the outside, raising, yes, it raises the internal temperature right. of the home to vacate the 120-degree uh, air down to mid nineties, and then shutting everything down, mm-hmm. and taking down what the house may get to eighty five, eighty six, and bringing that back down to eighty. That is a shorter amount of time spent with the AC on than it is just trying to keep us at eighty with a hundred twenty degree blanket. Interesting. The <laughs> thing that is untangible that you wouldn't be able to. Uh, I can't really. Without, which, which I showed you yesterday, yeah, is that one, on top of the 90-degree air that we're pulling in, if I'm running the misters, I pre-cool the air around the windows that I do open for the, the fan right. down to mid-80s. So then I open up the windows... And it creates a the fan sucks. Oh yeah, I, it'll suck. Start a diesel. Yeah, right. It, it is formidable. There's no chrome left. On there the are hitch. men and women jealous of the sucking power that this centric air fan can do. Right. It is amaze balls. Yeah, it, it moves air. You, it, you, it does. It, it feels like a like a semi wind tunnel coming through the. It, the it's hallway. pretty good. Yeah, as it comes funneling through the hallway, yeah. there is a breeze. So when you factor in the misted cool down air immediately around the windows plus the amount of volume of air that it's moving if you're anywhere near a window it feels like a a breeze cuz it's moving cuz it's moving right so there is a there is a feeling effect of the it, it might it might a thermostat may tell you 
like in a non air moving like stagnant air thing that it's it's high 80s or something but if you're anywhere in the duct sucking path of this fan it's it's manageable right now there are limitations as i ran into today <laughs> <laughs> oh so the numbers the numbers show it too so i i think i showed you and mike and and data's the um Saturday of last week, we had a 100-degree day. My AC ran for, I believe it was seven hours. I printed it out, and I totally forgot it in the, in the house. Seven hours. My AC ran for seven hours. On Sunday, where I had it off the bulk of the day because I was up, up in the attic, but then we had to shut everything down because it got hot, it ran for five and change. Uh-huh. Uh, that may have been Monday as well. Tuesday, as I took data from Monday's testing and moving and wind and whatnot, I think it ran for four four hours. Tuesday, as I'm like slowly stroking my micromanaging AC peen, <laughs> I'm like work. I'm like I'm looking for peaks. I'm like, oh, this is the management. I think I got it down to two two and a half hours okay of usage yeah. and that uh, tuesday i think was like a 97 degree day so my ac ran, for the course of that 24 hours my ac ran for under three hours uh-huh. on a 97 degree day and it was okay in the house yeah it was okay uh then wednesday the day that we recorded the podcast i was two hands stroking the pain and feeling the groove <laughs> on a, another high 90s day, I think it was at least 97, uh, I had AC usage down to an hour and hour and three quarters. So it can be done. Yeah. And, and if you have a higher tolerance for a little bit more heat, it can be done. Uh, today is where the, ex- the exception to the plan came in. Today was, we were over 100. I think we hit 103 was the last time I checked with the Amazon lady and phones. The, where I was normally trying to, I would watch for the peak in the attic. And then let, when I start to see it drop down, we would have the misters on, open everything up, kick the fan out for a couple hours, and vacate. Uh, the 100 plus degree temperature required me, it was still starting to peg the house thermostat to a temperature that was getting too hot. Uncomfortable, because it, even with the misters it, on. Even with the misters with on. With about 8 to 10 degrees of right. difference, it you're was, still in the 90s. It was just a little too much heat, Yeah, uh, and it, it wasn't coming down fast enough. But I had vacated the, the uh, attic air down to mid-90s. So I had achieved the goal of vacating that 123 degree air so i i did shut it down i shut the windows i turned the fan off shut the windows down and then we th- set the thermostat down to 80 80 down to 62 yes yeah, it's something small so now once it gets there and once we get into the evening when it gets back into the 80s we can open everything back up again right. and we'll start to calf stuff off right so there is, I mean, it remind, this whole thing reminds me of, like, the Prius guys that, like... They had to figure it out. Yeah, there, there's some... Experimentation. There's some tweaking yeah. involved here. Now, could I wait until 10 o'clock either way and run my AC? Absolutely. You know, and then at 10 o'clock, turn that central fan on? Absolutely fine. I mean, uh, it kind of feels like how much time and effort do you want to put into this on a daily basis, true. right? And mm-hmm. I can tell you that... That the uh, even if I am not slow jerking the micromanaging pain, uh, there there is still I could still feel comfortable in no longer running the AC. Certainly after ten thirty, eleven o'clock at night, turn the fan on and we'll be fine because it does pump cool air at, at that late at night at that temperature. Yeah. Without needing to run the AC. Whereas before, yeah, we were running the AC. And I guarantee you that AC was kicking on at 1 to 2 a.m. anyway because the attic was still probably 90-something degrees. Oh, easily, yeah. 
So the attic comes down sooner, and I can now leverage that fan instead of AC to help save money. Uh, <clears throat> it was at, I was telling somebody at work, a colleague, I was like, I can't believe I waited this long, regardless of the min-maxing. I can't believe I waited this long as a homeowner to, to put this in. Right. Uh, $1,200 is nothing to scoff at. I totally understand that. Yeah. Um, I, I stand behind anything that was probably $300, something that could move 700 cubic feet a minute. Um, anything is better than nothing, especially when I look at the garage and we're kind of st- fucking, st- the garage is now my new pain point. Right. Like we're, st- I'm, it's trapping air. In yeah. It. It's trapping hot air. In and here. the garage itself isn't insulated in any way. Right. So we're we're victims of a hard problem rocking a hard place here yeah. in the garage. Well, you know, I have that gable fan and I haven't checked on it. I mean, I hear it running. I know it's running. But I haven't checked, I haven't done any testing of temperatures, but I know when I first hooked it up and that thing came on, you could feel, especially on that side of the house, is like the warmest side of the house mm-hmm. anyway, you could feel the cool air rushing past you mm-hmm. in a similar fashion that you have in your hallway. Uh, but instead, it's just drawing, instead of going through the house and drawing it up into the attic, it's just pulling it in t- through the vents of the attic. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing I've been doing the last couple of weeks is uh, we have one of those, that pull down ladder that you rescued Shanna from that one time. She left every minute. <clears throat> oh, she did. Oh, yeah. Um, why, so I'll just open that up. So that will draw, that will kind of force. Oh, the, there that is will, a breeze. Yeah. That will kind of force air to come from the bigger space, which is at the other end of the house. Right from the, mm-hmm. and then that also draws air through the garage from the front of the house up into the attic. Right. And then out. I mean, you do have like yeah. thermal, so you've got yeah. hot air rises. So if you have an opportunity, and the thing is, earlier when I was trying to get stuff, I felt like I was still getting radiant heat coming down. Oh, okay. With that door open, yeah. So it's like I could see that. I, I mean, yeah. the bottom line is I could feel it. Right. What was it? A draft or radiant? <laughs> So right, uh, this is the I I have to get on this. Uh, yeah. The insulation seems like it should be the first thing, but I know how simple and how ease of use it was to install the fan. Uh, uh, spending another twelve hundred dollars for this amount of cubic feet is it's not a yeah. it's not an option. Right. Uh, so I'm looking at a couple other things that maybe move somewhere near seven hundred. Uh, or solar powered fans that run off a thermostat that I can run in through the uh, uh, the under eave soffits, uh-huh. and then perhaps just have them facing in different directions and running off solar power. So then I've I've got at least some sort of ventilation on the quick, right? Um, and then maybe installing some fan uh, like uh, just like blank soffits or soffits blank vents that will help suck from the top of the the garage here because it's otherwise it's encapsulated entirely. Right. Uh, just to get some form of drafting with the solar fans. I think that's probably where I'm going to go next. Cause of, this, this is pretty hard. One, one of the problems we have is that Chandler's room is in the back. Uh, this is the Southwest corner of the house. So the back corner of the house, that's the corner of the house that gets the most, sunlight all day so by the afternoon Mm. his warm or his his room just warms up all the time it's like he complains about it being warm in there all the time it's like yeah we've got a thermometer in there the rest of the house says it's 78 or 79 and his room is 82 or 83 you know what i mean yeah so he's always like five degrees ish four or five degrees ish over what the rest of the house is so that's one of the things we've been sort of playing with is like the venting Mm-hmm. The vents from the AC system, like, mm-hmm. well, this uh, this bathroom doesn't really need much. You oh know, yeah, oh yeah. Let's yeah, close yeah. these yeah, ones I down. I shut the fucking bathroom. Down. Yeah, yeah. And let's let's force air to go somewhere else. Right. So let's close this one down so it's minimal. And then you know some other parts of the house that maybe don't need as much air because they're maybe on the front side of the house or whatever. Mm-hmm. Let's close those vents down a little bit more and yeah. try and force air to go back to his room. The other thing that we've been looking at is. It might just be time to pay somebody to come in and blow some more insulation mm-hmm. on top of what's there 
just to get a nice thicker layer just above his room yeah. so that way he doesn't get the saturated heat. Uh, I don't know also if the fan being on that side of the house, the gable fan, mm. uh, draws more w- w- warm air to that side of the hmm. house and that affects his room somehow. I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure about that. Hmm. It's 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 an interesting problem and he's been doesn't fucking pay rent or anything, but yeah. it's he's been complaining about his yeah. his room being warm, and that's not cool when you're trying to sleep and that kind of right. thing. So it's like so we've been trying to kick around different ideas. Maybe we just go get a couple of rolls of insulation and just roll them out just over in the top of his room. Yeah, you know that kind of stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that works or yeah. what else to do about it. it. It's a weird thing too, because you might be asking yourself, like, why are you guys so talking about? Uh, if you're in California, like, yeah. this is the new normal. Yeah. Like, uh, suffering, you know, trying to energy conservation because it's so hot, brownouts, uh, or your place that uh, you're just trying to, maybe you're a one-income household and you're trying to manage your bills a little bit better. Yeah. Or your uh, some random dude is turning your thermostat off because you accidentally opted into some plan, you yeah. know? Um, or your kid just decides to turn it up, right? Or your kid, um, <laughs> you know, the, these are um, the, this is topical at least in our state. Like right. this is this is a hard adjustment that a lot of people are are running into. Um, well, power I'm, here is not cheap, right? Now, if you're Mike and Angie has a guy make a, a drag it solar, you, you probably <clears throat> you've got they've got solar to backfill some right. of their usage, and they're probably dealing well, not. In, potentially in their home but better insulation hopefully <laughs> <laughs> new homes better materials right it may be not straight but they probably have better materials <laughs> maybe <laughs> hopefully <laughs> it was all the leftover pieces from when they were building the yeah. other houses um you know uh, will and fun will i'm sure yeah. also have a newer home so their their setup is probably more energy optimized but those of us in older homes, before a lot of these things of uh, uh, regulations for uh, having a whole house fan were in place, or you were someone that has been just kind of, I'm not out of sight, out of mind, paying attention to my electric bill because right. you've been out of, you go to work most of the day or something, you come home, uh, maybe you've COVID out of a job, you're spending extra money on your AC. Some of these things may help you. Right. Uh, <clears throat> if maybe it's outside of your wheelhouse as a, as a DIYer, uh, I re- totally recommend, uh, that's totally possible. You can yeah. call someone and have it professionally installed. I guarantee you whoever is going to do it is going to be in and out in less than a day. Yeah. Uh, but if you're looking to save bills, uh, you know, and manage your, your house climate a little bit better, whole house fan. I stand behind it 100%. Don't wait as long as I did. Been wanting one for a while. Yeah. We have. It's, it, you know, we were we were talking about it the other day when I when I came home and I was like, oh, that thing's pretty cool. And then uh, we kind of like were like <laughs> looking around the ceiling. Where, you put- where can we put it? You yeah. know what I mean? And she's like, put it in the hall. And I'm like, yeah, but see the returns here. And the return hose goes right over the hallway up to the AC unit. And yeah. like, I don't even, I don't think you can put one in there. So it's like, eh, yeah, you know, there, there's no way uh, you really, uh, you know, yeah. you'd have to get up there and take a peek. Yeah. Like the place that I thought I want, where I wanted to put it, I ended up putting it, but not in the it, landscape versus portrait. Uh-huh. Like I wanted one way and the, truss alignment meant i had to turn it my ocd really wanted it to be <laughs> right landscape yeah uh but the bottom line is fuck it I, I, it needed to be in yeah. and this worked uh there were really i mean it there were matter. really no other options it didn't matter if you were doing it or somebody else was going to do it that problem was going to be there anyway right so. right and bottom line is it, landscape or portrait however i installed it it still sucks hard yeah. right there here's it's what i want to know is if you close all the windows and doors and turn it on do you get, are there any whistling is there is i have you tried it i don't think we've i don't think i've tried it uh and part of that is because 
and no, now I don't know if I want to fuck with it <laughs> because I know how hard it sucks. Yeah, I'd be I'd be concerned that it would collapse it, or start <laughs> pulling the AC ducting, like. Yeah, it's, in like a like a suction Ziploc like vacuum bag. Like it's like it, a, the opposite of a pressurized cabin of a plane. Yeah, you know, I I don't want to fucking find out. I mean, it moves. Yeah, I would be concerned. Hmm. So uh, when you turn it, I on mean, I could put like a whistle next to a window and like slightly crack it and then see if it'll blow the whistle, which it should. Well, right? you, you turn it on and it feels like you're at- Like I'm leaking. 7,000 feet, like, you know what I mean? If I if I stand on the ladder with my pants down, like right near the vent, <laughs> yeah, this is this is hot. Oh, I haven't felt air in there for a while. Wow, <laughs> this is nice. <laughs> that's right past the taint. So that's how they do it. Wow, if you just get hot and then it- <laughs> Right up there. And then I don't have to lean anything up. It just shoots it across the attic. Oh, Fantastic. Man. That's funny. Well, I didn't realize that they have uh, like a like a tube that comes off of them to point the air inside the attic. Is that correct? It has a- That's what mine does. Yeah. yeah and I'm, I don't believe mm. they all do that. I think yeah. some are a fan that's almost like on a register uh-huh. that you're, that's right there at the drywall. I, but this is- well, I saw some that looked like they had a fan on the end of, so the pipe comes up off the ceiling and then turns, and then there's a fan at the end of that. Yes, that's what this is. That's what mine is. Oh, you're, I thought it was right above. You could see. I thought you could see no, the. Oh, there, you can't. No, it's a like a snuffleupagus trunk okay. off the register Okay. about four feet, so it turns at a 90, and then it's got a you know small plane prop engine looking <laughs> thing at a, the end of the duct. Jet motor? At the end of the duct. Oh, huh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. And it does have the uh, R5 rated dampers. So uh-huh. when I turn the fan off, if they shut and hot air from the attic doesn't come leaking back through the, not that it would because hot air rises, but right. there's no real leaking of hot air coming back down through the, uh, the ducting. Sure. It shuts and it closes. And then when the fan turns on, it sucks, sucks the doors open. Yeah. And so the, the one that I my parents had at their house uh, was much bigger, bigger mm-hmm. footprint, mm-hmm. Um, and the the louvers that you're talking about that open and close, mm-hmm. those were what you saw on the ceiling. So those louvers were what opened, and then it was like a belt driven mm-hmm. electric fan up there yeah. that you could see right right above the the louvers. A lot of the uh, I would say a lot of the sub six hundred dollar category uh, fan uh-huh. options involve still involve the belt, okay, the belt driven motor style. Uh, I don't know necessarily know why that is. Maybe perhaps it's an efficiency using a like a reducer and a pulley yeah. from the motor, and that's that's you know pay what you get. Yeah. This is mine is a motor. Directly attached right. to the Electri- all electric, yeah, to yeah. the fan. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So that that's my spiel. And if you anyone so, wants to talk about where do whole, I sign whole house fans or fences, go to foosholehousefans dot com. Yeah, he'll come and install it for you for Your cheap. Big fence post. <laughs> I can. St- I'm still limber. I can still get around trusses in an attic. All right. So I have a question for you. Okay, go. Um, how would you feel if one of your kids went to Florida? <laughs> <laughs> well, how would you feel about that? Okay. Knowing what we know at the moment and what we've all been he- through. <sighs> I mean, this is, this is the case at my house. Yeah. My son and his friend, Dylan from a couple doors down, uh, Booked flights and bought tickets for oh a big show in Miami that's happening right now. Okay, and what is there? How many days? I'm totally gonna derail you, and yeah. I'm doing it because it's there's it's topical. Yeah, but how many days is he gonna be there? Till I think Monday. Did you tell him to go to Hollow Inlet? Oh no! Fuck! No, I didn't. No. Anyway, that well, would have that would have been funny. I don't know. Oh, that would. Okay. Anyway. Carry on. Carry and on. so they went and they, he flew out, um, took him 
early in the morning to the airport, the both of them. And uh, you know, then they're in Florida, and it's like it's kind of becoming more known mm-hmm. <laughs> that Florida's not not doing so hot, doing so hot. And and like we discussed, zero fucks regarding. Right. The governor's uh, out there trying to say, please go get vaccines. Right. And like we discussed on the last one, 97% people with not get vaccines, not vaccinated. And then we have friends of ours who are like, my mom and dad went to Florida. Yeah. And came back with COVID. And right. Chandler lives with us. So it's like, I have concerns now, you know. Rightfully so. Yeah. Like there's, he's obviously, he's a, Grown ass man, right? He's his own adult, right? But he is staying in your household, right? Uh, fa, I don't. Hey, yeah. sad dad, man. I, it's that's a tough one. I mean, you know, I want him to be able to make his own choices. I would love for you know, and I I think that he mm, uh, he takes in the stuff that we give, but doesn't care about the things the the information that is provided to him. He doesn't. He he gets it, but doesn't have as many fucks as right. <laughs> as we do. Oh yeah, yeah, right? yeah. Uh, to put it in a nice way, um, he 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 definitely cares, but also being a twenty four year old is invincible. Yeah, and so there's a bit of that. Um, so I I struggle. I'm struggling right now, and it's like I kind of want him to like go get a COVID test. Yeah, when he gets home, I think you know. I think you probably need to drive. How wait? So uh, when's he come home? I think Monday. And yeah, you're going to be out of pocket. Yeah. So when do you actually share the same space with him? Not until the next weekend. So you you you're gonna kind of know, right? If he comes home. Well, I mean, it'll be okay because we won't be there, right? But I feel like that's the good time to be like, look. Please go get one. Please go get a test. Yeah. Um, you know. Yeah, so they, and I saw some stuff. I can't remember if I had posted this, this part, but it was the, because we're leveraging, so the Delta variant is roughly twice as contagious as the the one most of us were uh, famous, for. famous for here in the States. Right. So it's roughly twice as contagious, but... The vaccine is the vaccines that we've all gotten so far are better equipped to uh, work against it. So it's twice as contagious, but the vaccines seem to be better or more effective against it. Ha- the contagious part, essentially, what they've been shown in the UK is that where the Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson and Johnson and whatnot were roughly in the mid nineties as far as their efficacy. Delta takes off about ten percent. Yeah. So now, uh, we're working from, I you know, people to be cognizant of. You're ninety something, like oh, I'm almost purely one hundred percent immune. Uh, is now what would be a B grade algebra student. Right. You're you're not an A plus. Right. You're you're a B grade. Now if you're <laughs> playing the home game, um that's that's something you want to be hyper aware of that if you're going to a place where you're in a mass amount of people, twenty five or more, or you're in an enclosed building uh, with people that you don't know, you're <clears throat> probably c- Wanting to take those 2020 precautions about wearing a mask and keeping your hands clean because right. you're not at 90 something percent anymore with Delta, right. you're at 80 something percent, yeah. Uh, and he is now in a state. Well, he, not only is he in a state, <laughs> but also a, a large show, uh, right? The show is called Rolling Loud. I just looked it up because oh, I okay. remember. Which is a big hip hop show, and you think any of those people give any shits? Not in Florida. No. That's probably why the show's in well, Florida. Apparently, the flights that they had to Florida, oh. so, Southwest, yeah, uh, were completely full, and it was shocking to both Chandler and Dylan on the flights how many people had 
the the wristbands for the show because you have a wristband that you can't take off. Oh, which is a so fun. they were already wearing them. Yeah, people were wearing them already. In fact, Dylan, when they got his wristband a couple weeks back, yeah. it came in the mail, and he put it on and realized he won't be able to get it off. Right. <laughs> so he had to wear it for a couple of weeks before the Oh, show. fuck. <laughs> damn ding dong. Which cracks me up. But they were surprised at how full the flight was of people going just to go to the show. Which... So did he mention anything about them having to uh, like get in on the flight? Prove that they were show that they were vaccinated. Anything? I about think their they card? just had to wear masks. Um, I don't think there was any. As far as I know, there wasn't any like, uh, uh, you know, no like you have to be vaccinated or anything. Just you have to wear a, a mask on the flight. And here, here's the thing too. Cause, and you touched on this. Like, he's a good man. Yeah. He is not a heartless idiot. No. But sometimes his foresight is lacking yeah or the excitement for what he's trying to right. do precludes right so he, other he, things shiny spoon yeah exactly uh, something tells me that certainly if he is in any way shape or form when he gets back while well, you guys aren't there one he ain't gonna hide that he's sick. Everyone's going to know if Data is sick. He can sleep in his van for all he can. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, would, I would think that uh, it would just be a, a gentlemanly thing to do. I would, Especially yeah. if mom nudged him. Like, sweetheart. Yeah. Please. And, you know, like I said, it's not like we're like, you can't do that. It's right. like. Hey, you're 24. You can make these decisions on your own. Yeah. Uh, you work. You know. He's paying for it. You're paying for it. Oh, right. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, do the do you? But also, you have to come home to people who there's a couple people at our house who are, you know, that have asthma and are mm-hmm. high risk. So it's like, uh, you know, <laughs> where you're going. And you know what you're doing yeah. with a lot of other people. Right. Like, I think there's almost 100,000 people that go to that show. That's Who's there? It's a, it's like a hip-hop show. It? It's a hip-hop show of some kind. I'm, not, you know, I'm not a hip-hop guy. It's Rolling Loud is the name of the show, but it is probably every hip-hop artist you've ever heard of. Is, it, is Kanye going to be there? Oh. He's got a new album not him. dropping. I don't think he's hip-hop anymore. <laughs> he's not? Shit. I don't know what he. I have no idea. Um, ASAP Rocky. Okay. Travis Scott. Post, yep. Post Malone. Oh. Twenty One Savage. Oh. Young Thug. Okay. Lil Lil Uzi Vert. I don't know that one. Uh, Megan the Stallion. Oh shit. Um. Who else? Suicide Boys. Don't know. Lil, oh wow, that's his sticker on the back of his shit. Yeah, Rick Ross. Hey. Uh, I don't know most of these. Saweetie. Okay. Rod Wave. Yeah. Shoreline Mafia. Okay. Saint John. Okay. Plies. Don't know. Puya. No. Who? Poontang? Puya. Poontang. Uh, K Camp. <laughs> Currency. Action Bronson is going to be there. Okay. I know who that is. Uh, YK Osiris. Famous Dex. Uh, Stunna for Vegas. Oh, Fat Nick. Oh. Yeah. Uh, hey. Yeah. I well, heard heaven he, forbid he ever goes on a diet. He went to fat camp and was skinny Nick for one summer. <laughs> Buddy, uh, Casanova, Rob Banks, Pierre Bourne, Renny Rucci, Jack Boy, RJ Mr. L.A. <laughs> it's like one word, too. That's the weirdest thing. We name. are so old right now. I know. Germ. Okay. Uh, I knew a band called The Germs back uh, in hey. the day. Uh, Kenny Mason, 22 G's, Chris King, Jazzy, Hood Brat, 300, po- 300 pounds of goo wop. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Fendi P, Splash, Zanotti, and Doman. Those are all of the artists wow. that are at this show. It's a pretty big show. It's a multi-day show. I, so it's kind of like, presume... uh, fucking, oh my God. What's the... SoCal one out of Palm oh, Desert. Yeah, this is a yeah. Um Coachella. Yeah. But it's, it's like, you know, East Coast Lollapalooza. because they can still throw shit. 
Yeah, I don't know why. Maybe that's the reason why it's being held yeah. there. Palm but Desert it, to be like, you can't hold that shit here those, we all die. Those artists were just for Friday. Oh, wow. There are more artists, <laughs> holy shit, for Saturday yeah. and for Sunday. Wow. That is crazy. But, you know, the big the big headliners, uh, they kind of mix those between the days. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like Post Malone and ASAP Rocky. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, well, I wouldn't mind seeing those guys. But did you want to see um, Shorty Shorty? No. How about Tay Money? How is Shorty Shorty better than Too Short? I don't know. <laughs> what about Big Baby Scumbag? He's playing. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dude, here's one I'm sad I'm missing right here. Baby Smooth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Some of these uh, artist names. Oh, my gosh. So he's there. Yeah, so the, he's there. Coming back Monday. Yeah. Dude, you totally got to tell him to see if he has time to get it in between his hungover to get to find a way to get to haul over in I think yesterday would have been the only day their day because they did go to the beach mm. um like actually Miami Beach and they went to Hollywood Florida and stuff like that that would have been their day to do Damn. that but he was with he's with like two dudes they're not going to want to go to haul over inlet you know what i mean my dad wants me to go and film I, some boats I don't taking the go, shit i'm paying for this trip myself i don't want to go there did you see the uh, did you see the one with the uh, whatever are they call the Blue Top Legend. It just came out in the last week. No, oh no, there's a, a new one. Uh, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. Well, there's like tons of new ones. There's new ones every day, but this one is <laughs> uh, Blue uh, Top Legend, yeah. and it is two girls, twenties. Uh huh. In uh, it is a small Boston whaler. Okay. Uh, with like it's just short of like uh, I think it's like a Mercury eighty. Oh god. Maybe one ten. Uh huh. But she's got like a, a captain's a thing. Trolling motor. So she's got, I mean, it's tiny as <laughs> shit, dude. With like the uh, aluminum scissor rodded oh, uh, yeah. canopy okay. with a blue top. So okay. it's a blue stretch canopy. All right. So, and she does like have like a captain's console. So there's a wheel and a throttle. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Very, it's very fucking small. <laughs> I mean, this thing is 16 feet, maybe. Okay. Outboard. And. The, I would like to think that these two l- ladies are fucking hammered off their shit, uh-huh. and one of them went, "Let's go pound a haul over inlet," and oh, the other one went, "I got a boat," and that's what the, and that's how this started. They come tearing ass, uh-huh. and it is a big wave day. Yeah, and their first pass <laughs> through. <laughs> oh, they go through multiple times? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. There's like, I, the way that they frame the video, it's like first round, second round. Oh, no. They, the first round, they come through and they catch a wave and they, you can see the whole underside of the fucking bow. And when they land, it is they like, were dry dock. It was like a comedy <laughs> show. These two girls, I mean, the one girl lost the captain. Well, loses her sunglasses midair. Oh no! And she picks it up, and they're all you can hear is like hilarity screams, like "Ah, oh, fucking let's do it again!" Oh my god! They're having a ball. Yeah. It is not like oh panic, we went too high. Yeah. Or that was pro- fun. Let's do it right. again. They come. Yeah. They go out, and you know who knows how long they spend out. But then they come back, and it's like a non-issue thing as they come back through, and they're like, right. "Oh, here comes back the blue tops." Ha ha ha. And then it tees up the next like little segmented thing on on the YouTube video is like uh blue top round 2. I shit you not. They come tearing ass like it was the first one. I honestly think they're just like how fast can we hit this in Oh my god. And they get like they hit some chop and they hit what would be like the perfect like r- launch angle launch launch <laughs> ramp. And just off to their part of port starboard starboard side there's like a 20 something foot cv or something right the fact that i can tell you probably what the boat was is embarrassing to me i'm surprised oh, that oh, you like, actually it's a it white thing with like two outboards full of fucking dudes uh-huh. and they hit this perfect launch wave and the entire boat is up out of the water 
two ladies in their 20s with zero fucking fucks. <laughs> None at all. Nice. In the air, it is like a Dukes of Hazard moment. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, I sent, I put a fucking screenshot in our Discord the other day. Oh, oh, that was that one? That was oh, them. okay. Like, they are up. They're, everything of this boat is out of the water. Okay. <laughs> and then for like a brief second, you obviously hear like the prop like, Hit high RPM. <laughs> but yeah, because she's like, fucking full throttle. Let's do it. Full send. Anyway. At that point, it's uh, just a prop. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I showed that to both the kids this morning, and both of them are just, and Xander's like, do they eat it? I'm like, oh, wait. Just wait. And then, you you know, as they whip past and land, obviously, they're fine. They land both these, these super badass jumps, but the one where they pass the frat boat yeah. of white guys is just like, dude, you guys got no dicks. <laughs> These chicks just absolutely slayed everything. Balls big as fucking medicine balls. And uh, anyway. Now I feel like I have to watch it. Yeah, it's, it's good go. stuff. I'll have to send it to you. All right. Yeah. Uh, anyway, boy, if he caught... Data has had a moment to catch all over inlet shit. I would just laugh my ass off. I mean, I, I, I have... I don't have a lot of desire. I've been to Florida one time years ago. I don't have a lot of desire to go back, although I would like to see Miami Beach at some point. Yeah. But the thing that I want to do in Florida is drive the Keys the all the way to oh, yeah. Key West or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah. I want to do that at some point. You know? That'd be nice. Yeah. I'd like to do that. Fly in to Miami. Why are you talking to my brother? And t- I, you know, he was doing... Um, it was uh, Full sale, like the game school... Like kind of like uh, what healed was for like uh, technical schools. Okay. Full sale was for like a, gaming and oh. game design. Okay. Out of Florida, uh, I I think he was busy with school and pot at that point, which is fine. I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. But so I and he's not really a car guy, but I don't think he got out as far as like I would have had I been in Florida I would have been like I'd like to drive to some places and see some things so he was like fucking I mean, let's if I get was there, high and make video games and I'd be like cool yeah that that getting the the getting high thing it wasn't wouldn't have been my priority I would have been like I want to go see some shit let's, let's go see some shit yeah uh, I'd love and to get go wrecked do that. by hurricanes yeah. yeah now I was on the Gulf side I was at Fort Myers uh, which is an interesting area but beautiful it was a really cool area really yeah uh, it was really strange to be like super warm outside and super cloudy with like lightning strikes happening in the clouds. Yeah. And then every once in a while it just rain and you're walking down the beach in the ocean and it was like warm still. Really yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah. Really, really weird. But the notable thing for me, and I don't know if I've told the story on the show before, is f- you fly in and I, I think I got there at night. So I think it was around 10 or so I got my rental car. And I'm driving to the hotel and like dry, and I'm like, eh, what do I got the windows down for? You know, it's like beautiful night out. Yeah, yeah. And the air air's running. What the fuck? I turn off the air and roll the windows down. And within like three minutes, I was like, oh my God, it's so muggy. Oh yeah. And then I rolled up the windows and turned the air back on. Like, this is this sucks. Yeah. You know? And it took a little while to get used to it, but I have not when we were on the East Coast, I did not make it outside of North Carolina. Really? Uh, Maryland, New York. Um, but we, uh, and like a small jaunt into South Carolina, but a lot of that was because it was like all work. Mm-hmm. When maybe some driving play between me and, and my buddy. Yeah. But it was, we would drive to a couple places. But we, we uh, I would have loved to have gone to Myrtle Beach. I mean, yeah. that's that's still, like, a hot thing that I, I regret not having an opportunity to go to. But like yeah. I said, I was young, and it was, like, good money. You know, I put in tons of hours. Head down, make the money. Right, right. Mm-hmm. And there were a lot of times there was guys like, we're going to Myr- Myrtle Beach. And I'm like, fuck. Uh, I'm just going to rack raid boxes and hard drives and all the fuck. Nah. Yeah. Um, never made it to Florida. Yeah. Never made it that far south. Yeah, it's it's an interesting area because it's like flat as shit. It's just really, as from what I saw, of Florida, it's just yeah. it's it's not much Pancake. of the state is above sea level very much. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. There's some hills and stuff, but it's not much. Hmm. Uh, that's what's really strange to me is how flat it all is. 
And then I think it just gets worse the further south you go. Yeah, you just know? more and more of a sandbar. Yeah, pretty much. N- yeah. Yeah. I did have one of the best steak dinners ever at Sanibel. It's, I don't think it's there anymore. Sanibel Steakhouse in Sanibel Island. Really? Uh, oh, my gosh. I was there doing some training for Sony back in the day. And the guy from Sony was like, I'm going to take you out to dinner tonight. And he came yeah. to the hotel and picked me up and took me to the steakhouse. And I'm like, filet stuffed with lobster? Fuck yeah, dude. Wow. And it was the most buttery, most delicious filet I've ever had in my life. Really? It was so good. And I have never had another one as good as that. Really? Yes. Wow. It was that delicious. Uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe because it had lobster with it. Right. You know what I mean? Maybe because they just boiled it in fucking butter. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So good. But I think I looked that place up, and I don't think it's there anymore. Really? Yeah. I was sad to hear that. But I feel like nowadays, well, and I'm probably just being biased. I, I'm not even really, I, we've talked about this probably in episodes past, uh, I don't necessarily even believe that just because you go to one of these rubber stamp steakhouses uh-huh. that you're probably getting. I would um, I say I don't recognize the name, uh-huh. and I could just be totally just shooting off the hip and being incorrect. But uh, I would probably wager you're going to find a better like even Cattlemen's. Like I don't necessarily go to Cattlemen's because I believe that they're uh. The meats are better. Right. Uh, their meats taste better, I believe, because they're actually uh, they're butchering them in house, and so you know it's a little bit close. I'm going to say farm to fresh, but that's probably not what Callens is doing. <laughs> um, but they're they're in more in house. The yeah. meat is more in house. Right. Uh, th- so it's not necessarily it's not f- really going frozen ish. Yeah. From my perspective, but like a Ruth's Chris or something that's right over here, yeah. where you're under, you know, the prime grade is supposed to be taste better. Um, I'll be perfectly honest. I feel like I've overpaid for a steak at at a place that's supposed to have a better grade of steak. A lot of times, it's like, uh, you know, I, someone from a homegrown livestock, like a, an uncle or a friend of a friend that's raising shit out of Marysville or Yuba City, right? Um, you're probably going to get something of not Kobe beef, not Angus beef, but somehow the um, ruralness of wherever it was raised is going to, and you cooking it, yeah. or you maybe having a friend who's really good at. Well, that's uh, that's probably they, a big part of it is the or, preparation and cooking, right? Right. Um, you you can turn a decent steak into a phenomenal steak. If you've got probably one atmosphere, uh, two preparation, and who's co- and three probably the cooking method. Right. Um, I will take those for a steak that's probably not of a um, Kobe beef like tier uh, grade. Yeah. I will take something like that and probably enjoy it more. Uh, even regardless of however much it costed, or costed, however much it w- w- cost, <laughs> costed, costed, however affordable it was, <laughs> or non affordable, non affordable, <laughs> uh, cost aside, <laughs> it would probably taste better <clears throat> than something that was supposed to be on paper like this super high grade yeah. steak. Uh, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I've been. Oh, well, let me just say this: I've been places like, uh, what's the steakhouse that's over there uh, by Fries? Uh, out, out back. Outback. I've been to Outback Steakhouse and gotten a decent steak. Yeah, the you steak know? of the Applebee's of steakhouses. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, yeah. I've gotten a decent steak there. It's not terrible. Yeah, but they're inconsistent. You're not going to get the same right. thing every time. Uh, it it totally. Uh, we touched on this a couple of days back. Uh, so Dragon. Dragon and Mike, while they were in SoCal a couple weeks back, they brought us back um, like a boutique spice store thing. Yeah. And one of the things that they got the both of us was this super hot um, salt infused yeah. with 
all of the pepper peppers that and your ghost pepper. you would think would m- turn your asshole into napalm uh, <laughs> orifice. Um, yeah. It this salt isn't in- infused with it. Uh, smells hot. Uh, it tastes hot, but it also yeah, it, it's not napalm. Right. Um, that evening after I dropped yours off, I went and got a ribeye. I got a, it's Rayleigh's, so it might have been Angus. There's nothing special about it. I'm right. sure I probably paid 16, 17 bucks for a ribeye. Um, but I used the rub that they had also purchased from this this boutique place. Um, the link will be in the description because I believe they have an online store, and okay. I'm more than happy because I was happy with the product. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I used the rub in a. I I did put it in a more a uh, mortar and pestle thing, and I put some of the salt in it, and then I just mixed it around so that way I couldn't see it, and right. I just blindly did it so that way I couldn't <laughs> tell how much there was. Yeah, yeah. I I put in uh, like a couple sprinkles of the of the napalm salt, yeah. and then the rub, and that steak. It was different. It was sp- obviously it was hot. Right. Um. Uh, it was a, it was a good steak. Yeah. I enjoyed every every single bite. Um. Could I pay for that in a steakhouse? Probably not, because that, that that's one of those things that you're you're never gonna run into like a spicy ribeye steakhouse. It's no. never gonna happen. No. Um. They tend to go more traditional. But, and if you haven't tried something like that, I would recommend it because it was an interesting take on, you know, normally you're going to sear it and then uh, low heat it until whatever your temperature preferred is, or you're going to reverse sear it or however you're going to cook it. And right. maybe you're going to do some butter and uh, maybe thyme and rosemary, or you're just salt and pepper. That's what you probably know a really good steak as. This was rubbed in a spice rub with hot spice, and it was different, and it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah. I would, and I've never had a steak cooked that way. Yeah. Never had a steak cooked that way. Oh, I can't uh, wait. I haven't, I haven't done it It was yet, just but, different, and hmm. I was like, fuck, how yeah. have I missed this for so long? Right. Like, I never even thought of it. Now, would I take a steak and put fucking sriracha sauce on it, a ribeye? Absolutely not. But this was a way to do that. A uh, heat twist, right? Without totally and like, being also tra- a little bit of traditional spicing, right? Yeah, without being yeah, totally. yeah. Uh, it was really good. Highly recommend it. Yeah, I'm. I typically uh, pepper, salt, and maybe some garlic powder or garlic salt. Yeah, uh, depending on what my mood is. Uh, that's my typical steak seasoning. Sometimes I'll go like the Montreal spicy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. I'll use that because it's got a kick to it. Yeah. So this salt is intriguing because it has the kick, right? Yeah. And you can and use the regular. And it's not overpowering. I think yeah. We both. I think I had you do like a a pinky of it. Oh yeah. Um. You know what's there. Oh yeah. But it is not like uh, I've made a mistake. Right. Like some of the hot ones, hot sauces. It's like I have I have <laughs> made a mistake here. I I made a burrito the other day. And I made a mistake. Uh-huh. Uh, this oh. salt was, you know it's there. Yeah. Uh, and it lingers, but it is not Well, it's not a hot a detriment. sauce. detriment. Yeah, it's not a hot sauce. So it, it's, it's given time to m- mellow out as it cooks on the steak. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So some of that heat's going to dissipate and just blend into the meat. Um, yeah. I like that's what I'm all about. Oh, I mean, yeah. Yeah, hey. yeah let's blend. Let's, hey. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> We're at time, buddy. All right. If that's the way it's going to be. Hey, that is the way. I feel like we've we've butchered all the hashtags lately. You know what I'm at the end? You know what it is? Because every time we get this far, uh-huh. I think, wash your face. <laughs> so now it's my fault. Now I'm like. Wait, did you wash your face? What? Have you washed your face? Not yet. It's fucking, I'm hot mops. But you haven't washed it today at all? Yeah, wash, I was in the morning. Well, wash your face. Watch. Good. You're doing it then. Good. You're living the. You're I'm living out, my dream. I'm out of my teens and low twenties. I don't have really the acne problem. <laughs> That's my kids. Is I've passed that on to the kids. Right. No, I got it. Well, you should like wash your hands though. Oh. <laughs> Wear the mask. I <laughs> return the card. <laughs> 
<laughs> get the shot. Get the shot. There's another one. Do the kindness. No. There's, return the cart. Wear the mask. <laughs> wash the hands. All right. Wash your ass. Oh, wash your there ass. There it is. I mean, yeah, if you're going to wash the one end, you might as well wash I, the other I'm end. I'm just going to say this. Wash your face before you wash yeah. your ass. But yeah. Never, <laughs> never. ATM, man. First, that, that's wa- for porno wash only. Your, let's, let's, I think it needs to be real quick. You wash your face, wash your ass, and then wash your hands. Yeah. Right? There you go. Yeah. There's a flow. All right. Anyway, we'll catch you next week. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye.